Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Catholic Talk Show. Today, we're joined with our special guest, Alex from Hallow, and he's going to be talking about with us the efficacy of prayer. Is it is it helping people? That's right. We're going to say, why do we even bother to pray? What does prayer accomplish? And how does prayer affect you spiritually, physically, emotionally, and more? And I can't think of anyone better than Alex from Hollow to give us insight on that. Good to see your face again. Hope you're doing well. Likewise. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exciting times over at Hollow. I mean, um, I know that you have reached levels that with Hollow that you've never reached before. I mean, I think you're number one on the prep. And I, I'm, I'm just glad that the Catholic Talk Show could get you there. I know you ran that little ad during the Super Bowl. But I'm glad <laughs> that we were able to make you reach these new heights, Alex. <laughs> you guys are doing the heavy lifting. So heavy lifting. <laughs> Just riding your coattails. <laughs> so what was the story? I mean, who thought like who was so ambitious to say, dude, we should run something on the Super Bowl? That's a that's a big swing. I mean, how does that come up? Yeah. Um <clears throat> I don't know. So so Hallow from the beginning, maybe this is going back a little bit too far, but from the beginning we were we were thinking about how so Hallow the prayer, the contemplative and meditative tradition on the app changed my own life. And for us, I wouldn't build the app just for me. But we were praying about how to build Hallow at the very beginning. And we came across the 10 talents passage. And uh, both of uh, me and my other co-founder who were, who were thinking through this, both meditated on this, Alexia Divina. And something unusual stuck out to us, which is, you know, th there's a lot of risk in that 10 talents passage that you don't think about. Like, yes, you have to be willing to go out and try to multiply your talents and, and try to do good with what God's giving you. But they didn't just like to double your money in a very short period of time. They must have had to take pretty risky bets. And we, we, we never really thought about that idea of risk because nobody loses their money in the, in the parable. It would have been interesting had somebody like bet something and lost it or tried to make a deal and it failed. Um, but the, you know, that's, it really stuck out to us that Hallow has this unique opportunity. And we were praying about what can, wh what is God trying to do with Hallow with this app? And it's not, we're not like curing cancer. We're not in, we're not inventing anything new. We're not trying to land a rocket ship on Mars. If how I use Hallow every day. And if Hallow's not around tomorrow, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a little bit upset, but I'm going to be fine. You can still pray. You can pray without an app. There's, I can do my rosary. I can go to mass. Whereas if my church isn't around tomorrow, I'm going to be really pretty upset. If, you know, Elon Musk doesn't figure out how to get us to Mars, we're not going to get to Mars. You know, it's, there, there's, if my doctor's not around tomorrow, I'm going to be pretty upset. Hallow isn't really one of those things. Um, but what we do have is this unique opportunity um, to take on pretty big risks, to reach out to people that are really hard to reach. Uh, like people who have fallen away from their faith for a long time, people who aren't Googling Christian or Catholic things, people who aren't going to church, people who aren't interacting with people who go to church. And we have this unique opportunity with this app to try to reach out to those people and introduce them to a relationship with God. And so from the beginning, Hallow has been about, uh, you know, it's, had there been a thousand people using this thing, we would have said that's crazy. Um, 10,000 people, 100,000 people, that's way more people than I could possibly imagine. For us, though, what it's really about, so it's not about numbers or growing or any of that stuff. What it's about is trying to take these risks to reach out to people who otherwise would be really hard to reach out to. And so the Super Bowl, honestly, I mean, we're a small startup and the Super Bowl is a crazy bet. Uh, but <laughs> what happens is uh, once every 10 to 12 years, the Super Bowl Sunday falls immediately before Ash Wednesday. Um and Ash Wednesday for us is like a huge, it's, it's when everyone starts, it's our biggest day by far. Everybody starts this massive 40 day challenge. Um, and it's just this perfect kind of call to action to like, Hey, even if you haven't prayed for a while, just take 40 days and just give it a shot. Just five, 10 minutes each morning, just give it a shot. And you know, a lot of people download the app throughout the year, but Lent especially is just this beautiful time for people to re-engage with their faith. And we thought, Hey, you know, if there was going to be a chance um, that we would take one of these bets. It would be, it would be this year because of the timing of it. Uh, and then we just thought like, you know what, we just had to figure out, is there something that, is there creative, is there an ad idea that, or a concept that would be good enough to warrant it? 
And ultimately what we landed on was hallows just about prayer. So we might as well just spend this spot in prayer and thanksgiving to God. And we thought that was a pretty awesome, like it's, it's, it's the perfect representation of what hallow is because all we do is pray. And even if nobody downloads the app at a minimum, maybe you got one or two people who hadn't prayed in a while to turn their minds to God. And you know, that to us would be, you know, certainly maybe not ROI positive from an investment perspective, but po ROI positive from a, from a heaven perspective. So we, we uh, decided to take this wing and it turned out, I mean, God did incredible things with it. We got a, a ton of really incredible uh, feedback from it. We got a lot of notes from people who hadn't been to church in forever, who came back to their faith for the first time and came back to church and started praying again. Um, and so we, uh, we were trying to get to number one, which is just kind of a, a fun little thing we were trying to do on the app store. And Temu, which is the Chinese social media slash shopping app, giant conglomerate in China, spending, I think they're spending $1.2 billion just on Facebook ads this year, just to try to enter into the U U US market, which is obviously, you know, that's infinitely more money than we could ever spend. And they ran six yep. national Super Bowl commercials, six, which is crazy. Uh, and so we were like, all right, there's no way, there's no way we get we get ahead of Temu, but on Ash Wednesday, we got, we, it was, we were just at number two, just behind Temu for like most of the day. And then right at the end of the day, God jumped it up. So That's it was nice. a pretty cool ride to see, but it's been fun to get to pray with everybody through it. That's, That's amazing. Me. You know, and I don't think anyone will ever accuse you of being lukewarm, you know, lukewarm gets spit <laughs> out and hot or cold is what he, you know, our Lord commands us to be. And I love that kind of that boldness and that, yeah. that confidence, right? I mean, th that comes from a place of confidence. I'm sure you had doubts whether it'd work, but the confidence and the trust in the Lord that, hey, let's just get everyone to take a, I love the approach. Like, hey, let's just pray together for a second here. That's a bold approach. And that's what this you know country needs. I mean, it, it was wonderful. So, I mean, we were really proud to see that and, and to see that you guys hit number one and the, the impact that you're making speaks to, I think, the heart of this episode is why do we even pray? What does prayer even accomplish? So you've invested your life. You've invested your talents, you know. You've in invested um, in a Super Bowl ad. Why is prayer so important that you would put your whole work into this, your life, your energy, everything into it? What does prayer accomplish and why do you want people to pray? Why should people pray? Yeah, well, I think it starts with like what what is prayer? And and f from that, actually, why you should do it is is pretty obvious. But But prayer is just the means through which we have a relationship with God. Uh, and there's a bunch of different ways to pray, um, all of which are beautiful, all of which are ways to enter into a real and authentic and living relationship with God. Obviously, the mass is the summit of our prayer life. But I mean, there's there's prayer is just, uh, you know, I think the catechisms in anything that lifts your heart and mind to God, anything that allows you to start a conversation with God, build a relationship with God. It's the medium through which you talk and listen for God in your life. Um, and so if you start there, it's like the, the secular perspective would say, you know, does prayer work? And the question would be like, well, does it reduce your stress levels? And there's a bunch of studies that it does, even more so than secular meditation or any of that stuff. Does it make you more purposeful? Does it make you happier? Does it make you a better father or a better husband? Does it help with addictions? Does it help with habits that you're struggling with? All of which the answer is is a resounding yes. For me, uh, you know, the big things for me is it brought me just this enormous sense of peace and this enormous sense of purpose. So it's like this this combo of of peace, but it, and and I think that's kind of God, which is this this real living purpose. But it's not yours. It's not like you have to decide it, and it's yours to figure out and to fail or to succeed at. It's God's, and so you're just doing His will, and you're trying to at least. And with that comes this enormous peace. But that's like the I don't know the the what you get out of prayer is kind of the secular way of thinking about it. It's like what you get out of meditation or what you get out of working out. Prayer, though, is not it's not primarily about what you get out of it. It's about what God gets out of you and like how he's trying to get things out of you, how he's trying to change your heart. Prayer, the primary goal of prayer, and I would argue of my life on earth, is to surrender everything to God and to let God transform my heart completely into the heart that he wants it to be and for my life to be a tool for him to do what he wants to do in the world. And how could you do that without prayer? How could you do that without listening to him? I mean, that's the the only way to do what he do what you want what he wants you to do in life is to listen for what he wants you to do in life, and so that's prayer. And so I think everything, whether it's love, whether it's service, whether it's theology, whether it's thought, all starts from this relationship with God, and all springs from and reinforces this relationship with God. And that relationship with God is prayer. It is 
uh, building a relationship through having a conversation and having sharing your feelings and letting him transform your heart to then go out and love better. And then that ultimately prayer, you know, the only real thing that matters at, 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 as far as whether prayer works is whether it bears fruit, whether you love better because of it. And that is God. God is transforming your heart to love better. And so the question is, do you love better? And the answer is yes. And the, the reason is because you're surrendering your heart gradually over time to God through prayer. So I don't know, it, it, the, does prayer work for me is more, it's, it's less of a, you know, what, what does it achieve in your life, which are incredible things. I mean, it changes your life and gives you all this peace. But it's more so what God does in your life through it, which for me has been, you know, the really cool journey over the last five, seven years. Yeah. And then you mentioned um, within this, the surrendering. And uh, my wife uh, recently came to the Surrender Novena with her uh, battle with brain cancer. And and then, you know, we have we have this like colored through uh, the the 40 day challenge that I've been doing with her. And it's just like just the amount of grace that comes from surrendering your life, surrendering your heart, like the book, the Walter Chizek book. And I, I bought like four or five of them. Like, this is so amazing. Like, I want to teach my kids this like dynamic, these dynamics of humanity engaged with the path of your life with God, like all these nuances that he went through um, to discover more about God to, to, to give more over to him and the fruits that came from that, that are provided in that challenge are, uh, completely life-changing. So now you're getting people into this app and then they're listening to these things that are just amazing. And I mean, I hope, you know, I hope it just keeps continuing on because it's been a instrumental app in my life. You know, it really has, you know, Alex, he's not just a promoter um, of the app. I mean, yeah. you can look at his iPhone usage. He spends, he said, 12 hours a week on Hollow. <laughs> That's awesome. 12 hours a week. I mean, and I was at his house last now, night. He's I got will, the books everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I will, he's, it's the real. I will say, a lot of those hours are probably the music that I'm playing to go to bed. So it might be continuing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that works. That works, whatever it's, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I had a friend that actually was was using the app, and his his uh, wife passed away. Um, you know, maybe maybe a decade ago, maybe five ten years ago, and um, she, you know, she had a she was diagnosed with a terminal illness and given like six to twelve months to live. They had little kids, and she, he said as soon as she was diagnosed, she had this like just this enormous peace that just came with it. And she just became like just super loving and joyful and just like everything just seemed to melt away. And he was obviously losing his mind. He was like, I can't, you know, he's, he's trying to figure out how to deal with this traumatic loss and what they're going to do and um, all the health things and everything. And he, he, he approached her after several months of this and he was just like, what, like, what has happened? What, what are you doing? Um, that is like, you're so different. And she goes, I realized something really simple, which is our whole life on earth, everything is just practice. We're just given this life to learn something and to practice something. And that thing is how to surrender everything completely and totally to God. And if we do that, that's it. That's the end of the spiritual life. That's the end of everything. I mean, the goal of everything is just to surrender to God. And it's funny too, because I do all these like, I talked to these different startup CEOs and all this stuff. And they're like, what advice do you have? And I was like, give up, just, you know, totally surrender everything. It's not the normal, it's not that it's such counter, it's such counter to the world's, you know, you can do it type advice, but it is. And father Chizik just does such an incredible job in this book. I first read it four years ago, bought it for everybody on our team. Like I buy it for everybody I possibly can. It's the best. I mean, if we do one thing in our life and it's introduced this book to a couple more people that, I, I'll, I'll be infinitely happy. Hopefully Father Chizik is praying for us up there, but the, he just does such an incredible job of articulating. So he has this crazy experience, obviously personally with in solitary confinement in the Soviet Union and then in labor camps, but uh, he has such this relatable articulation of what it means to surrender. Like you can say it and I can say it here. Like, yeah, you have to surrender everything to God, but he just has this perfect realization and this beautiful way of articulating it that makes it so understandable. And he already took his faith pretty seriously. Like he was a priest before he was in, and, and, and a missionary priest at that to like a really sketchy area. 
uh, before he was imprisoned. And he has this conversion during his imprisonment. And it's this like, so for people who already take their faith seriously, or for people who are just at the beginning, it's this like, what does it mean to in every moment, God wants you there for something like in every single moment, God wants you there. So just be his hands and feet, just do what you think he wants you to do. And just, you know, if you can't figure it out, just take a guess. And the next moment, just take another guess. And if it's wrong, ask God to bless it. And just, it's just such this beautiful articulation of it. And the people who do the, you know, Sister Bernice and um, Sister Miriam and uh, Father Mike and Jonathan and Mark, they, they just do this incredible job bringing it to life. But it, it is this, I don't know, this, this journey of surrender is such a cool. And then, yeah, we've seen through this. I mean, we have, I think, something crazy, like a million and a half people praying through this thing now. But the... Um, but we've just gotten these notes from people who like people who haven't been to church in 20 years. We've got people who are deeply depressed or anxious, who are able to find some sense of peace for the first time. We've got somebody who was about to kill themselves who wrote to us said, uh, I just wanted to let you know that I think I would have killed myself by now had it not been for the grace that God gave me through this app. So if you do nothing else in your life, just know that I wouldn't physically be standing here alive if it wasn't for this app and the grace that God gave me through it, which is just like, praise God. We have this young woman who growing up her entire life, a father of a young little daughter heart breaks my heart but she'd never heard anyone tell her she was beautiful in her whole life never heard anyone say she was beautiful which is just heartbreaking what she must have grown up through and uh she plugs in this app she presses play it's a total it's a totally silent session and she just hears god say you are beautifully and wonderfully made do you think i make mistakes and that's the first time she's heard anyone call her beautiful in her in her in her, in her entire life there's a uh, there was this other woman who wrote to us and said she was deeply involved in this uh, uh, habitual sin, this sexual, this life of sexual sin, this deep, deep, uh, deep life of shame. And she started praying and she said she didn't think she could do it because she was so ashamed that she didn't think she could spend time with God. God couldn't possibly love her after what she'd done. And again, like we don't we didn't write this session. This isn't in any audio file anywhere. She just hears in silence, God say, I love you. And she goes, you can't possibly love me. I'm too broken. I'm too lost. I'm too damaged. And she's, God just says, I love you. She goes, no, you can't. He says, I love you. She says, no, no, it's not possible. He says, I love you. And all she hears the whole time is just, I love you. I love you. I love you a hundred times through this five minute silence session. And she said, it changes her life. He put, picks her back up, puts her back together again. We've got people who have been addicted to alcohol for 20 years who haven't been able to be sober for more than a week or sober for the first time in decades. I mean, it's just like <laughs> what God does in people's lives. And and this world can be so, uh, yeah, it can, it can feel like, it can feel like, like stuff's not really going our way. And like, where is God? And we just have this enormous privilege to get to see what God is doing in these people's lives, millions and millions of people's lives and how he's bringing them his love and his peace and into a real, real relationship with them, which is just a blessing to be able to be a part of. Yeah. yeah, we were just talking about that right before the show. You know, it's like the effort we put into something, like, for example, this show, and then the way that God takes our intentions of communicating something, and then there's all this grace that's abounding in the people listening to it and the transformations that have occurred. It's so humbling but it's also very encouraging. And that's what I tell some people. I'm like, go, go do something for God. Like you, you will be amazed. Like, you know, like at how he can just pick up so much and do so much. It's very profound. And God is a hundred watt Marshall amplifier. Right. Man. He is going to take whatever you do and make it that much more. Yeah. And I guess we look at it like he was saying, we look at it sort of in human terms. Yeah. You know, that if, if I do this, then one person would listen or whatever. And he just takes it and runs with it. And it's so beautiful. And, you know, my wife doesn't pray how, uh, hallow as much as I do. I don't think any, anybody does, but, <laughs> uh, but I introduced because we, we've prayed the surrender prayer. That was a big thing for her. You know, she's got seven kids. She's not done yet, so to speak. And, and it was really beautiful to see her listen. We listened to like, you know, I've, I've gone through this, this, um, this, uh, exercise, like, you know, for, we're at 17 days or whatever. I've gone through that like two or three times already. And once with her, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just like watching the tears like come down her face 
it's just, it's very powerful. And now I've got this book. So you've introduced this book to somebody else. <laughs> I appreciate it. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I mean, the surrender prayer and the surrender novena. And I mean, it's all just, it's all just so beautiful. I mean, it's just, yeah. And, cool. and it's so freeing. It's just like, yeah. yeah, Jesus, you take care. I mean, and Dallas Jenkins actually from The Chosen talks about this a lot too. He's, he's like, I, I used to be so focused on the numbers and like how many viewers I'd have and opening weekend or whatever. And he had, you know, his big thing was the fish and the loaves. And what he took from that passage was it wasn't their job to get the numbers. It was their job just to bring what they could. And they just bring what they could to God. And he does these crazy things with it. And it's the same thing with us. The funny thing is like, and, and I knew, you know, I know this, hey, you're supposed to surrender to God. I was like, okay, yeah. And maybe that'll like make you feel a little freer or whatever. But the funny thing is how tactically he works. Like it's, it's, it's not like, it's, it's not like, oh, just this, this esoteric thing. It's like, no, he'll actually do the thing for you. Like get the thing done for you. Like we, we had, we had been trying to get Mark Wahlberg on Colbert for forever uh, to talk about prayer for forever. And uh, we couldn't really get the right in. We didn't know who on Colbert's team, whatever it was. And uh, Mark obviously super swamped. And so you got to be, um, you know, sensitive with the schedule and all this jazz. And so we have this Ash Wednesday launch. And we're like, hey, Mark, we can get you on a couple shows. Let's do a couple shows in the morning, which are incredible. This it would be awesome if you could come do these. And he was like, yeah, that'd be, that'd be great. And then he t- tells us uh, that day that he just happens that to be on Colbert promoting a film separately, uh, like on Ash Wednesday, he just happens to be on Colbert, which is like, we didn't do it at all. We didn't organize it. We didn't talk to anybody. He just happened to be, I mean, there is literally no chance. I mean, that's the most insane thing in the world that the, our biggest day by far, he just happens to be promoting a film on Colbert. It was just crazy. And he's like, Hey, you want me to talk about the app? I was like, yeah, obviously he was like, okay, great. Uh, and I was like, are you going to be able to mention it? And he was like, I'm going to mention it every other word. And it was, it was incredible, but it was, it was just this perfect example of God just like, yeah, okay. You can do all your work. That's fine. And then I'll actually do it. But if you just let me do it, I'll do it. You have to work hard. You have to, yeah, you have to do all that, but like, I'm going to be the one doing it if you let me. So just let go and let me do it. And it's such a, he does so much cooler things and it's so much more freeing. It's so much more fun because it's not your thing. You don't have to worry about whether it works or not. It's his. And he's a show off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he certainly is. He certainly is. And he just waits till you're done. And then he's like, ah, yes. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, there's more. Yeah, yeah wait, there's more. You're like, all right, I can't do it. And he's like, okay, no, yeah, I was, I was going to do it for you. Oh my Alex, God. is, uh, is Hollow available in other countries? Yeah, we're available everywhere um, yeah. where so you can access the app store. We, what countries are you finding besides the United States that are really adopting this and picking it up? Like what languages? And like, are you seeing like that this is now becoming a worldwide phenomenon? You know, is there like, how's that growth going? Yeah, uh, it's been pretty crazy. And languages are, yeah, another one of those things where it's like you've got people praying with content that's, you know, I don't even understand. Uh, but we've got... I think we've got seven languages now. So obviously anybody can play it, not obviously, but anybody can pray with the version in English, all the content, many people pray in English. And so that, that works globally, but we've got Polish, uh, Tagalog for the Philippines, uh, Portuguese, mostly in Brazil, uh, Spanish for most of Latin, probably Mexico and Colombia are the bigger of, uh, the countries in Latin. And then we also obviously have a bunch of, um, folks praying with the Spanish version in the U S and then we have German, Italian, and French. The, um, uh, the biggest probably is Brazil, although Mexico is pretty close and the Philippines is pretty, pretty big. And Poland, honestly, is we just launched in Europe. So uh, but we've been in Poland for a little bit. But Brazil is probably we were number one in Brazil on Ash Wednesday as well. Uh, and then Mexico, we were pretty big, too. So it's I mean, it's just really cool to see. Brazil is obviously a massive country with a ton of Catholics and a ton of Christians in it. Um, but the Philippines is is pretty huge, too, in Mexico. And so, yeah, it's cool to see globally a bunch of people praying. It's just I think like the week of Ash Wednesday, we had 10 million prayers prayed just in that week, which is just absolutely insane. So is there like a, is there like a Brazilian father, Mike or, or like Filipino, uh, um, Mark Wahlberg, Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> like, you know, is it, is it the same people? Do you have different, different, uh, Filipino Jesus, Filipino Jesus over there? Yeah. Like, is there different people kind of leading those there or is it, uh, how do you translate that? And like, how do you get these kind of prayer leaders? Because I think that's been really integral to your successes having yeah. these very high profile prayer leaders leading people in prayer and connecting them with, you know, the people out on the, you know, on their phones. 
Uh, yeah, it's pretty funny because all we do, all we do is just share. <laughs> like we didn't obviously write he lead with me, so all we do is take something. A uh, partner, obviously, with Penguin and the Jesuits and the um, publisher uh, with he lead with me, and then partner with these incredible uh, leaders. And so all we do is just like connect these people and share it. So it's it's. But yeah, we do the same thing in Brazil and Mexico and the Philippines. Um, we've got yeah incredible you know artists and musicians and actors and a bunch of incredible uh, priests and bishops and cardinals, a bunch of incredible people in, in every country that, uh, are, yeah, kind of their own little, there's not, you know, it's, it's tough to, tough to replicate a father Mike or a Mark Wahlberg, but you've got some pretty incredible people in Brazil and Mexico. So we've been blessed to be able to partner with a bunch of them. That's awesome. So what are some of the features of hollow that number one, what do people use the most, but then what are some of the ones that you were like, this is a great idea, but no one's using it. And you want people to be able to find this obscure back drawer prayer thing that they should be using that they're not. So what do people like and what should they be using? Well, the, our, our community challenges is what we call them, our, our kind of seasonal challenges that we launch um, that everybody goes through are probably the most popular. Uh, although the daily content is really popular too. So a daily rosary or a daily reflection with Jeff Cavins, Jonathan Rumi, um, you know, we've got a little daily Father Mike snippet that we, we have. We've got a um, uh, women's daily devotional. We've got a daily like Ignatian meditation. So the dailies as a content, finding something that you know, you want to try to grow in each day and then meditating with it or praying with it and building kind of a daily habit is pretty popular, but probably the most popular still is those seasonal challenges. And usually it's mixed up between the, you know, somebody has a daily habit and they add on the seasonal challenge to kind of keep things fresh or dive deeper into their faith in some way. Um, you know, music is pretty popular. The sleep content's pretty popular. Um, we've got some great chant stuff. So there's a bunch of stuff that's really pretty incredible. Um, you know, there's, there's a, uh, yeah, I really like, so on the content side, it's, it's kind of decently popular, but the lo-fi is just incredible. Just in like, it's just beautifully peaceful. And it's, it like snippets in these mother Teresa and St. John Paul II audio clips and all these things. So it's the, I, I really highly recommend the lo-fi. I listen to it all the time. That's probably the majority of my, probably the majority of my listening time. The, um, but, uh, and the Divine Mercy Chaplet doesn't get enough doesn't get enough love, so I would I would highly recommend that to folks. But I don't know in terms of functionality, um, you know, routines are pretty popular actually on the app. Setting up a daily routine, so there's a little button on the home where you can set up a, a daily routine. But that's pretty helpful. It's been pretty helpful for me. It's just like a quick, easy place to go to do the stuff that you do every day, and it kind of reminds you and tries to get you to stick to some sort of schedule, some sort of discipline. So that's pretty helpful. And then we are coming out with this new. Um, this new functionality in the, like right now you can join your parish on the app, but it's kind of just a wait list. And so we're coming, we're coming out with a good chunk of different ways to pray together as a community, either as a parish community or as a family or as a um, local community. So that's probably the thing that I'm most excited about from a, from a functionality perspective. So Alex, you know, all, all those, all those features and functionality, those, those are exciting things and those are reasons to use it. But I want to cut you off right there because I got to take a minute to talk about our sponsor. Now our sponsor is Hollow. Hollow is the world's number one prayer app. It was co-founded by this guy, Alex Jones. And if you, his mission is that if you can just get one person to pray that this app has been successful, but there's been over a billion prayers prayed on this app. This app has so many features and it's been able to combine all the rich patrimony of the prayer life of the, of the church, but then also use modern technology to Use those two things together into an app that is literally changing people's Where lives. Where can they go to get it? So if you go to catholictalkshow.com <laughs> forward slash hollow, you can try out this app 100% free and get all the premium features and see if this is something that makes a real impact in your life, something that can really influence you to pray more. Because, look, if this app can get you to just pray a little bit more every day, it's going to make a fundamental impact in your life, in your relationship with God, in relationship with your with your family, with your friends, and with yourself. I Did mean, you say free? I did say free. Now <laughs> we get a special hookup. We do. Deal I know this. Our, I know the guy over there, this, <laughs> the Al dude, and he's like, "Look, for your people, we can get it free." So it's a free trial, and you can get all the premium features and see why this app became the number one app. Why and, it's you know all over the world. Why it's changing people's lives. And if you didn't go through Lent, right, right. you still have a little bit of time. But we also can sort of transition to ask Alex what's going on after Lent. Like, yeah. where, what can we look forward to on the app after Easter's over? 
Like, what you got going on? I'm sure you got a big summer thing planned. You know, what could we look forward to? I'll give you. I'll give you. That was a pretty good pitch. That was better than. That was better than I could have done. That was impressive. That was impressive. Well done. The, um, <laughs> um, the, yeah, we've got a lot of really incredible content coming out this summer. And uh, for Easter, we're going to have a custom challenge. I, I the we're still f- putting the finishing touches on it, but I think it's going to be really something special. I think we're going to focus on the early church and the early church fathers. So it's going to be some really, really cool content with some great guides. So we'll announce it. It's all under wraps, but we'll announce it here uh, soon, but Easter really looking forward to. And then we always do these really powerful, really beautiful summer challenges where we go through how to pray through the summer, how to grow deeper in scripture, how to grow closer to God. Um, you know, we did the spiritual, a, a little mini spiritual exercises before we've done Marian consecration, St. Joseph consecrations. And so, um, you know, fun little kind of seasonal challenges to push yourself to grow deeper in a in, in your faith. And the summer is just an awesome time to, you know, most people kind of take the summer a little easy and church attendance maybe falls back a little bit, but it's such a beautiful time to grow deeper in your faith and be outside and start praying and, and grow closer in a relationship oh, with God, go on walking meditations and all that stuff. Yeah. In the summer, I hike every morning and I use... Uh, I, I do the rosary, I do the daily reflection, reflection that usually gets me through maybe the first 35 minutes, mm-hmm. you know, and then I put on the music and that gets me to an hour, hour and a half. And it, that's how I use that app the most, you know, yeah. um, Alex, I remember the first time that Ryan and I met you as you and Alessandro. And it was just, it was just the two of you guys you had this little booth. You're like, Hey, here's this card. You want to download this app? And we talked about it. I thought this is a great idea. Uh, and that was in Indianapolis. And that's, uh, we got the Eucharistic Congress coming up this summer. Um, you going to be there? Yeah, uh, we will. It'll, and we'll we'll be partnering with them to to try to help help it be as successful as as we can. Hopefully, be some small spark, small part of it. We've got so Matt Marr came up with some, put together some custom adoration songs for the app, which are really honestly life changingly beautiful. Um, which is uh, and so hopefully we'll add some more content that's adoration specific and eucharistic um, to the app here over the next couple of months leading up to leading up to it. But um, but yeah, we'll we'll be blessed to be able to to help partner together. But yeah, it's been a it's been a pretty wild ride in the last last five years. So it's been a blessing to get to work with you. Most people thought it was a stupid idea. So uh, the fact that you thought it wasn't wasn't a totally insane idea at the beginning is uh, is is uh, speaks volumes. Yeah, anything that can can draw people closer to Christ, man. That's like I just get passionate about it. Period. You know. So. All right, but before we go, I, I do want to tell a funny a hollow story. I'm sure there's a bunch out there. You know, you're getting a lot of life changing stuff, but I'm sure there's some funny hollow stories. I, I was in adoration at my parish in Texas, and I was playing some adoration. I just kind of felt like I wanted to listen to some music after mm-hmm. I prayed. So I'm like praying, and this lady's just like looking over her shoulder, and she sees my ear ear pods in, and then she's just looking, and she. Then I'm like, oh, this is. Like she's about to reach a boiling point to where she can't take it anymore. Oh, she she's goes, gonna she have to come over and talk you to out. me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so she comes over and I like pull it out and she's just like, "You're in a house of God. What are you doing?" Yeah, I'm like, I'm at adoration. Like, you don't think I know this is a house of God? Like, you know, like this is kind of like the inside room. You oh, know? I thought this was the rolling skate <laughs> <laughs> rink. You know, <laughs> I'm waiting for a haircut. <laughs> yeah, so we we chatted, and I explained that the app to her, and then I'm like, this is app. It's hollow. It's got a lot of music in here, contemplative. This and so I'm I'm playing that, and then she's like, got her hand on her, hmm. and she's like. I don't even know what to think about that. <laughs> See, you could have sweet talked to her and gave her the link to go to catholictalkshow.com forward slash hollow. And there she could have tried it out 100% free and tried out all the premium features. Yeah, you, who knows? You maybe got a download. Right? <laughs> Everyone counts, man. You got to grind for this, right? Yeah, just not an adoration, guys. Maybe. Yeah, um, I, <laughs> okay, I, I, that's fair. That's fair. I can, I can concede that point. Um, yeah, Alex, this is it's it's really exciting to see the success that it's having. And it's really exciting yeah. that the reason that it's being successful is because like you said, it is connecting people with God and letting people allow God into their lives. You know, you could have put your effort and your talents towards anything. You're a really capable guy and a really smart guy. We've had the opportunity to, you know, see how you operate and how you can uh, contribute to the world, but that you're letting God handle it and just being a vessel for him. It's something that, like I said, it's the reason that we have been comfortable partnering with Halo for the entire run of our show and the mm-hmm. reason that we feel comfortable promoting it because it's something that we really, you know, we back and we believe in. So yeah. it's great to see the success and I, I just hope to see more of it and more of it and for it to continue to grow. 
Well, it's a blessing to get to work with you guys. I appreciate the kind words. It's all it's all just the good Lord doing crazy stuff, and we'll see where he takes it. But it's fun to watch him work. It's he makes it very clear that he's the one doing it, and so it's uh, yeah, it's just fun to be on this ride with them. So it's a blessing. That's, That's awesome. great. So now before we go, I just want to tell everyone, if you go to catholictalkshow.com, uh, you can subscribe to us on every platform there. You can find us on all the socials like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter. Uh, if you go to catholictalkshow.com forward slash Patreon, you can find all the different ways that you can support our ministry. There's a lot of different tiers for every budget. You know, we're not asking for your rent money, just some pocket change to help us to continue to grow. And in our gratitude, they, we've got a lot of different gifts that we can send you that you can help represent the man and maybe, you know, enjoy it. So... Yeah. Um, and again, go to catholictalkshow.com forward slash hollow. Try this app out. We really do use it. We really enjoy it. And, and Alex, it's always a pleasure to get the opportunity to speak with you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Bye-bye. thanks a lot for listening in, you guys. We'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.